Hi guys, it's John here with another benchmark comparison test between the Galaxy S22 Ultra and the Galaxy S23 Ultra. So as always, we've got the S22 Ultra here on the left and the S23 Ultra on the right. I'm going to run through the normal benchmarks here and see how they both compare with the October update installed. So to save a bit of time, I've already run the bench tests and I'm going to put the averages on the screen for both the GPU and CPU results. So we'll start with the CPU results. And the main difference this month is that the S22 Ultra's single core has decreased by over 10%. So that's quite a lot to go down by in a single month. The multi did increase by about 2%, but yeah, that 10% dip on the S22 Ultra is slightly worrying there. Are they maybe preparing people to start to upgrade to the S23 Ultra, or is something else happening behind the scenes? Maybe we'll find out in some of the other tests. S23 Ultra, however, nothing really very interesting here. A small, nearly half percent increase on the single core, and a small, nearly half percent decrease on the multi-core. So moving on to the Geekbench GPU test here, and not really much has changed at all between either phone, a very tiny increase on the S22 Ultra, and a slightly over half percent increase on the S23 Ultra. So next up, we're gonna run the Antutu benchmark, and we'll see how they compare here. These are last month's score, so hopefully we'll get something better, at least on the S23 Ultra. We'll see if that single core decrease has made a difference at all on the S22 Ultra at the end of this test. Okay, so with the Antutu scores here, we can see not much has changed here since last month. Very small increase on both. Still really good scores as well from both phones, as you can see. Both finishing on 34 degrees as well. I should probably mention the temperature in the room at the moment is about 17 degrees, so it is quite cold here in the UK at the moment. You can probably tell from my voice I've had some sort of flu the last few days, hence it's actually quite hard to talk. But anyway, excellent scores as always, but the S23 Ultra still winning by quite a bit. So let's move on to our stress test now, and we'll compare to last month's results. Okay, so the Antutu benchmark has just finished and I'd say we're seeing much better results here compared to last month on both phones actually. Firstly, the S22 Ultra last month was pretty poor. We had a lot of performance down here in the range of the sort of 60%. We're now up above 80% for most of the time. So I'd say it's now averaging around 70% performance. The CPU calls, clock speeds looking around the same, jumping up and down as they usually do on the S22. But yeah, much better overall result there for the S22 Ultra. S23 Ultra, as if it couldn't get any better, it has actually got slightly better, I'd say. So you can see here, performance-wise, we're averaging a good 85 to 90%, I'd say, average CPU performance throughout the whole of the test. CPU cores clocked at their respective speeds as well, with just slight drop-off here just towards the end. We did see a drop-off last month, but it was a lot sooner, so it is taking a bit longer to drop off. So there's definitely been improvement there compared to last month's result. Do we see the battery level on both phones? We're down to 75 on the S22 Ultra and 80% on the S23 Ultra. So I'll let the phones cool down a bit and then we're gonna move on to the 3D Mark test. Okay, so with the Wildlife Extreme stress test finishing here, we can see there's actually been a nice increase here on the best loop score on the S22 Ultra compared to last month, whereas the S23 Ultra hasn't really had any improvements in quite such a big way, just a very slight increase on the lowest loop score here. So yeah, slight improvements on both, but nothing too amazing to talk about here. Stability, 54 versus 67. And we can just have a quick look down at the rest of the results. So we are gonna move on to the Slingshot Extreme now. And although there is a new test in the 3 d Mark software, it's actually not supported on the S22 Ultra, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, we'll carry on with the Slingshot Extreme at least, and we'll see how they do here. Okay, so the Slingshot Extreme has just finished, and we can see there's been a very small increase here by about 3% on both phones, so that's good to see. Obviously the S23 Ultra is still almost doubling the results of the S22 Ultra here, 63 versus 109, 33 versus 63. So in the graphics test and in the FPS test, there's actually not a massive amount of difference in it. So you have 79 versus 78, 41 versus 59, 22 versus 33. So let's move on now to the browser test, and we'll just have a look to see if there's been any updates with the latest version of Chrome running on here with the October update. 
Okay then, so with the Jetstream 2 results here, we're down a couple of percent on the S22 Ultra and nearly 5% on the S23 Ultra, so no improvements there at all for the browser benchmark test. Right, so final results here then, we can see that the phones have 59% and 64% battery, so again, this is 5% difference between the two, not a massive amount really, to be quite honest. Temperature-wise as well, the S23 Ultra getting a bit warmer here, but other than that, obviously these benchmarks, there's not gonna be a massive amount in your daily usage that you're gonna notice. Certainly browsing the web is noticeably quicker on the S23 Ultra, I've found less stuttering, but most people aren't really gonna notice that unless you've got them side by side anyway. Gaming wise, obviously the S23 Ultra is still the champion here, but if you're not a massive gamer, stick with your S22 Ultra, you're not gonna have any problems for the foreseeable future. So I hope this video was useful. If it was, please do like, subscribe. Don't forget to leave any comments you have down below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.